things happen in life, you don't know why. And you only get to look at them in retrospect a long time later. But all of that stuff made me what I am today, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I wouldn't change a thing. It's sort of like the journey you're starting now in some ways, and maybe tell you about some of the mistakes I made, which would be in some ways more valuable than just talking about success. Pass forward a path of least resistance, maybe give you some ideas on what not to do. And I decided, even back then, I thought, well, maybe I should try being an engineer, because those guys seem to get jobs. So I enrolled in engineering, Engineering 101. I go to my first class of engineering. Whoa, was that tough. Whoa, 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 whoa. So I didn't hang out in engineering too long. In third year, I meet this girl, and we, uh, you know, we, it's my first serious relationship, and we move in together, and she was rather artsy. And she convinced me to go to night class in cinematography, advanced cinematography. And I really got into it. We'd go three hours in these night classes, and then we'd film, and then we'd edit, and we'd talk about making film, and I was falling in love, but I was also falling in love with cinematography and the potential of what it could be and being a filmmaker kind of went into that artistic bent. As I get into the film community, uh, I start meeting people that say, look, you know, we've seen some of your camera work. Uh, can we hire you as a cameraman? We're doing an industrial shoot, or we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing some sports filming, whatever. We just need camera guys. I'm learning the tools of the trade. I'm learning how to be a cameraman. I'm learning how to buy film. I'm learning how to budget for a shoot. Industrial, commercial, you name it. I'm a sound guy. I'm a lighting guy. I mean, when you're that small, you're doing everything. And I, I was just learning how to do it and really loving it and working a lot. You know, going to school all day and then shooting all night, editing on weekends. When you're really passionate about something, it's fantastic if you can merge that into your work because you don't mind working 25 hours a day, and believe me, I was. It was incredible, and my dad says to me, well, how are you gonna get a job with this? The environmental stuff hadn't even happened yet, and psychology, tough. You know, unless you wanna get into research, you wanna go do your PhD, not so easy. He was right, um, he's always right. So he said, why don't you get some tools, some building blocks about business, because really, even if you pursue any of those disciplines, you're still going to need some basic business so you can run your life. So I applied, I got in. This whole entrepreneurial journey, most people I talk to, they have this unique moment in their lives when this happens. And for me, it was when I was in grade 11 in high school and I got my first job. And I wanted that job because the girl I was interested in in high school was working at the shoe store across the mall. And this was an ice cream store and they were looking for a scooper. And so, I took the job, and the first day I was there, day was over, you know, I shut all the ice cream bins down, and, she, and I was ready to get back on my bike, go home. The owner was a woman, and she said to me, scrape the gum off the floor. You, you can't leave before you scrape the gum off the floor. And I said to the owner, I, I can't, you hired me as a scooper, I'm not a scraper, I'm not gonna get down on my knees, because I didn't want a girl across the hall to see me on my knees scraping gum. And she said, no, you're an employee. You're gonna do exactly what I say. This is Magoo's ice cream parlor. This was Magoo's ice cream parlor. It was right here, the counter was right here. And she said, you're fired. Get out of my ice cream store. But within minutes, I was on my bicycle on my way home in utter shame, in shock that she had that kind of control over my life. Changed my life forever. I have never, ever in my life worked for someone again, ever. No one has ever had control over me, ever, and never will. And I'm not dissing being an employee. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a different life. If you want that security, that's cool. And you can be a great employee, and I've talked about that before, but I didn't want to be an employee. I didn't want someone to have that kind of power over me. I never wanted that, ever again. And, and she was the reason I owe her so much that she twisted me that day. I never had a full-time job again in my life. I only worked for myself from that day on. That was the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey. I had enrolled in a night class and I met this guy named John Freeman. John had designed a program that drove Hewlett Packard plotters. Now when you're in television you're always making all these graphics. It's very expensive, very time consuming. Titles, we'd have to get them printed and there wasn't any you know digitized technology at that point. But John learned how to take a, a multi-pen Hewlett Packard plotter, which was an XY axis pen driven by a computer, and do graphics, and he showed it to me, and I looked at it and said, John, let's form a partnership. 
and I'll market this stuff and you'll write the code and I will fly all around the world and convince the plotter companies to bundle that software with their plotters. And I remember sitting on the red chair in my living room, we were trying to name the company. We called it Soft Key Software Products. That was the beginning of a journey. John writes the code, we package it up. Our first product was called Key Chart. Every product we made had the key in front of it. We flew down to San Diego where a woman named Mary Zoller was running the plotter division and I put on a show. I said, Mary, you gotta bundle this. I'll do it for $12 a unit. She just laughed at me. At least she was honest. She said, Kevin, I'm the number one plotter on earth. Everybody writes code for me. What do I need you for? Maybe you should talk to some of my competitors. And that's exactly what I did. All the Japanese, all the German, everybody else that was trying to compete with Hewlett Packard, the number one plotter, I said, what if you bundled my software with it? And boy, did that work. We sold millions of copies of Keychart. Millions, bundled with all these different plotters that were on the market. Now here's where my first million comes in. I started getting calls from everybody because it was the beginning of the dot-com era and they wanted to invest in my company. A bunch of uh, private equity guys invested in it. And then one day, a banker came to me and said, why don't we take SoftKey Software products public? I said, why don't you work with the finance guys, put a deal together, and I'm happy to take it public. Now I'll never remember the morning we went to the exchange. I woke up in the morning and I, I looked at myself in the mirror. I saw the stock was trading from the night before and I looked at the stock price, the number of shares I had, and I went, shit, I'm rich. It never hit me till then. And when I talk to entrepreneurs today, it's always the same. They always say the same thing. They say, I didn't think about the money. Is there anything more noble than creating your own wealth and setting yourself free? No. It's the essence of personal freedom. It's not about getting rich. It's about achieving something for yourself that is unique to our society and capitalism. Personal freedom. There's a huge sacrifice that people don't think about. You know, most people think, oh, I'm going to start a company two months later, it's going to be worth a billion dollars, I'll make a fortune. That is actually not what happens to 99% of people. Eight out of 10 fail. They have to do it three times. They spend a decade before they get their hit, or they work at one company for 15 years, and they finally get an exit. And the personal sacrifice is huge. There's no Sunday dinner with the family. You're working because some guy in China or in India or some woman out there is kicking your ass because we're in a global competition now. And I tell people it's not for everybody. Don't do it if you don't have the stamina to get kicked around and driven into the ground and get up and do it again. This is not kumbaya stuff, this is hardcore stuff.